Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures and TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over the implementation for the binomial heap. As a quick reminder, a binomial heap is a forest of binomial trees, and a binomial tree has a recursive definition. So a tree of degree zero is a single node, and a tree of degree k has a root node with k children, where the degrees of those children are k minus one all the way down to zero. So remember that a property of binomial trees is that degree a tree of degree k has two the k nodes and because we limit our heap to have at most one tree of degree k then we have the fact that the number of nodes is similar to binary because we're counting the number of nodes in powers of two and because of that we have that the length of the roots of the forest are less than or equal to log of n and then merging two heaps is similar to binary addition so this brings merge or union down from O of n plus m to log of n plus m. So all of the operations are the same as binary, binary heaps except merge. And if you need more information, here's a Wikipedia link that can be found in the source code below. And also this source code will be in the description below. Check out that link for the repository for all the implementations so you can reference that. So let's hop into the class itself. We're gonna store a few instance variables, we have the head, which is the head of the linked list of our binomial trees. And our trees are formed with nodes, which have a definition like so. There is a value with the generic type T, there is a degree, which is a number. And then we have the left child, right sibling representation. So we have the parent, we have the sibling and the child, we need the parent. So for, for when we're swimming back up, and the constructor just initializes these values. So value and degree, and all of these pointers set to null, and that's the binomial node. So we have a pointer to the head of the linked list. We then have the size, which is the size of the binomial heap. We have the pointer to the smallest root of the heap. And then we have the smallest value that the client needs to provide for the type T. So the reason why we need the smallest value is because the delete node uses it, and we'll see how it uses it down below. We also have a comparison function that the client needs to provide if the generic type T is complex and basic comparators in JavaScript aren't usable for the generic type T. So in a constructor, we just initialize head and min root pointers to null, set the size to zero, set the smallest value to the smallest value, and then the compare function to the compare function they provided. Otherwise, we'll have a default compare, which just uses the this stuff. So for inspection, is empty is easy. It just returns this dot size equals zero. And then now we're on to the insertion and deletion method. So the first one is in queue, and this in queues an element onto the heap. And this takes in a parameter of type T called element, and we're going to in queue that, and we're going to return a binomial node, which is the node created for that specific element T. So the first step is to create a heap containing that single new element, and we'll call that H prime. And then we take the union of H prime with our current heap, and then we set the current heap's head pointer to the new heap's head pointer. So let's create this new heap. So heap with element equals new binomial heap. And we're going to pass in type T, and then we're going to initialize that this with this dot smallest value because it needs a smallest value. We're then going to create our inserted element as a binomial node. And this is going to take a value, which is our element, and the degree is 1. And then we set the head of the new heap, h prime heap with element dot head is equal to inserted element. And then we're going to take the union of the h prime with our current heap. So we're going to say, new heap equals this dot union and we're going to pass in our heap with the element with the single element and this dot union lives on this class so when it's called on an object it's going to take the union of the current object with the heap that's passed in as, as an argument then we're going to set the current heaps head pointer to the new heaps head pointer so we're going to say this dot head is equal to new heap dot head and then we're going to increment the size then we're going to recalculate the minimum because there's a potential for the new element to be the smallest. So we have to recalculate the, the minimum roots by traversing all of the roots of the forest. And we will implement this later. And then we're going to return the inserted element for the client later. And because right here, this is a constant time operations here, we're unioning, which is going to be O of log n 
this is constant and this is O of log n. So this is going to be log n as well in Q. So the next method is dq, and this dq is the smallest element from the heap. This is like extract min, and this returns the node if we are able to extract it, and null if there is if it's empty. So the first step is to remove the smallest root of the smallest tree bk from the heap. We then make a new heap out of bk's children, so bk's children are not now fragmented, and we take the union of the children children's heap with the current heap to form the new heap, and then we return the removed root for the client. So we're going to remove the smallest root. So we're going to say smallest root equals this dot remove smallest root. And then we're going to decrement the size. And we're going to implement this later. If there's if the smallest root is null, that means the binomial heap was empty. So we're going to return null as well to the client. So then really this, this dot, dot size should actually be after here. So we only want to take the union of the roots fragmented children if the children exist. It's possible that we just removed a single node. So these next two steps are only going to, to execute if smallest root has a child. So let's put these steps here. We're then going to make a new heap out of the children. We're going to call this reverse children because we're going to reverse it. This equals a new binomial heap, generic type t. And we're going to pass in this dot smallest value. We then set the head pointer of this to this dot, the reverse list of roots of the smallest root dot child. Then we take the union of these children with our current existing heap. So let's do new heap equals this dot union and pass in the reverse children heap. And then we point our current head to the new heap that we just created, that head. Now there's potential for the smallest root that we just removed to be the minimum. So we're going to recalculate the minimum. Oh no. Recalculate the minimum. And then we're going to return the removed root. So we're going to return the smallest root. So removing the smallest root takes log n time because we have to traverse the entire forest of trees. And taking the union as well is log n time. In the worst case, our heap has one tree. So then our children, the length of the children will be log n as well. So when we reverse it, it's just going to be log n as well. And then recalculate min is log n as well. So then the entire runtime for dq is log n. The next method deletes the given node from the client. And this takes log n time. So you notice that there is a difference between these imp this implementation and the binary heap slash index binary heap. And this implementation assumes that clients are working with these nodes themselves. It's a bit easier and it's just less code because the, the binomial heap is already a lot of code. But if, but if you want to work with just raw values of generic type t's, you can use the concepts covered in the index binary heap and combine those concept, concepts with the things I'm teaching you in this video with binomial heaps. So delete node is going to take a node passed from the client and then it's going to return that deleted node or null if it doesn't exist. So we're going to make the node that the client passes in the smallest node in the heap so it swims up to the tree that it is in. So we're going to call this dot decrease key, pass in the node, and then we're going to call this dot smallest value. For example, smallest value can be number dot, whoops, number dot min safe integer and the client would pass this in. If it's working with strings then it's going to pass in the smallest string and other stuff like that. So since we don't know the, the type that the client's working with we're going to store that smallest value and this allows us to swim the node up the entire tree, the tree that it's in. We then just extract the minimum and we just return this dot dq. So this is going to take log n because we're potentially swimming up the tallest tree of the forest. And this is going to be log n as well because extract min takes log n time. And this takes log n time because we just covered it up there. So the next three methods are the helpers for the insertion and deletion methods. The first one is remove the smallest root, which is used in extracting the min because we have to remove the smallest root. So if there is no trees in our forest, we're just going to return null. Otherwise, we're going to find the smallest root. Otherwise, we're going to find the smallest root. And we have to traverse our forest uh, we can't just use the pointer that we have on the class which is the smallest root because we have to have access to the root before it um, and 
manipulate the pointers that way. So we're going to set current. This is going to be a binomial node of type T or null. And this is going to be this dot head. We're then going to let the previous pointer point to point current. We're going to have a minimum node, which we assume is current first. We then have a pointer for the previous minimum, the, the node that comes before the minimum node. And we're going to set this to null. And then we're going to move pointer up by one. So cur equals cur dot sibling. And this is a mistake if this dot head does not exist. Then we return null. So we're going to traverse the entire forest, which takes log n time. And we're going to loop as long as our current point current, current pointer is pointing to a valid tree. And if the current tree is less than the minimum that we have, then we're going to set minimum equal to current and the node before the minimum equal to previous. Then we set previous equal move previous up by one and move current up by one. And the way we construct this Boolean expression is by using the compare function that the client has given us. So const current is less than min is this dot compare. We're going to pass in the current and we're going to pass in the minimum and check to see if that's less than zero if it has a negative value. And these are nodes and compare takes raw values of type T. There we go. So we have to do one more check and that's to see if the smallest tree that we have found is the head. If it is, then we just move, we have to update the head pointer because we're going to remove it. So the way we check to see if the head is null is if the previous pointer has not moved at all or the previous minimum is also null. We then just move the head pointer of this current binomial heap forwards by one. Otherwise, we just link the previous roots with the minimum's right root. So we're just mani mani manipulating the pointer such that when we traverse our forest, the minimum binomial node that we found is not going to be in the traversal of our forest. So we're going to set the node that's before our minimum, called previous minimum. We're going to set the sibling of that equal to min.sibling. At the end of that, we're going to finally just return the minimum node that we just deleted from the forest. Next method just reverses the linked list of trees in O of t time, where t is the number of trees slash roots. And we need this in the extract min method when we are when we remove the minimum root and we have to reverse the list of children for that children heap. This is going to take in a head of a linked list of roots and return a new head, which is the, re the reverse of that. So we're going to have a current variable, which is a binomial node of type t or null, and this is going to be head. Then we're going to have two other pointers called previous and next, but these will be null. So while our current pointer is pointing to a valid root, we're going to set next equal to cur.sibling, so save that for now. Then we're going to move the next pointer of current backwards to previous, and then we move previous up by one and current up by one. And then we return the previous node, because at the end of the loop, previous is going to be pointing to the new head of the reverse linked list. And we're going to give a non-null assertion to TypeScript. Recalculate min is going to run in log n time. We're just finding the minimum tree of the forest of our heap. So if this dot head is null, we're going to just return, not do anything. Otherwise, we're going to create our current variable pointer and set this to this dot head dot sibling and set the minimum to this dot head. So while cur, if the current value is less than the minimum value, then we're going to set minimum equal to cur. And then we set the current equal to current dot next or sibling. And then, yeah, we just update the minimum. And at the end, we set this dot min root is equal to the minimum. minimum. So the next method is just one in the reading section. This returns the smallest node in the binomial heap and null of the heap is empty. And this is not log n. This is constant because we're storing a pointer to the min root when we, every time we in queue or DQ, we're re and also merging, we're also, we're always recalculating the minimum. So since we store a pointer to that, we can just return that in constant time. So this returns this dot min root. Okay, so the next methods are updating and this union is really the bread and butter of the binomial heap because it's leveraged in in queue and dq extract min and 
there's two phases to union. So union does essentially merges the supplied heap, which is called other heap by the client, and with the current heap. And this takes log n plus log m time, where n is the length of this heap, and m is the length of the other heap. And by length, I mean the length of the roots. So there's two phases in the union operation. The first phase is the merging phase, and this is when we have to, to combine both elements of both heaps into one heap object. And this is similar to the merge step in merge sort. So this is going to run in linear amount of time, where that is log n plus log m. So we're going to first initialize the new heap, const new heap equals this, not this, equals new binomial heap, type t, and construct that with the smallest value. Then set the new head equal to this dot merge forests. And we pass in that forest takes in two binomial heaps, and we're going to pass in this, which is the current object that the class is pointing to, and the other heap. So this is really merge forests. And this merges the root list of other heap and this heap into a single root list h that is sorted by mon monotonically increasing degree. We then set the size of the other of the new heap to this dot size plus other heap dot size. And this should go underneath these two comments right here. Great. Then we clear the other heaps for us, so we just set that head pointer to null for other heap. So the second phase is to coalesce the trees in this new heap. We're potentially violating the invariant that requires only one binomial tree for a degree k, and we need, we need that invariant to guarantee us logarithmic unions, because the unions are basically just binary addition. So the second phase, we're consolidating it by continually linking trees of the same degree. So from the comments, from the merge, there might now be two roots, but no more of some degree k. So the second phase links roots of equal degree until at most one root remains of each degree. So we're going to have three variables, previous root, which is a binomial node of type t, or null, and we're going to set this to null. We then have a root, which is equal to new heap dot head, and then the next root, which is equal to root dot sibling. Oh, and TypeScript is complaining that root is possibly null, new heap dot head. So if new heap dot head is null, then we just return the new heap. So these steps right here are going to be in a loop, and we're going to loop as long as next root does not equal null. So we can just check to see if it's truthy. And we're going to loop as long as we have roots that are the same degree k. So we're moving these for now. I will put them back in later. We have two main branches of flow in this while loop. If we have to move pointers, that means that we don't need to merge the next two roots in the list of, in the forest, in the list of roots. So we're going to set previous root equal to the root. And then our current root is equal to next root. And then we're not going to update next root in here because it's common to both branches of both flows. So we're going to update it here. Next root is equal to root dot sibling because root is going to point to the next root after these two if else statements. So the next root is going to point to the next next sibling. So at the end of the else statement here, we're also going to set root equal to next root. And then now root's now going to point to a binomial tree that is now the first of one, two, or three B, bk plus one trees on the new heap linked list of roots. So now we're just going to set next root is equal to root dot sibling. So to construct the move pointers Boolean expression, we're going to move the pointers if the current two roots, or not the current two, let's say the next two roots are not equal. So this means we don't need to link them together because we're not violating our, our heap invariant. The next three roots are equal. So the next three roots of the forest become equal in the case where we link two trees to form a new binomial tree of degree k, but then the next two trees happen to be degree k as well. So it's a possibility to have the next three trees slash roots to be equal. If that's the case, then we want to move the pointers because we don't want to touch, we don't want to merge the the first two trees of degree k. We want to merge the last two trees of degree k in the set of three. So the next two roots are equal, is easy to create. This just equals root dot degree does not equal next root dot degree. 
then the next three roots are not equal, the way we construct that Boolean expression is if the next root dot sibling does not equal null, and then the next root dot sibling dot degree is equal to the next root dot degree. So this is basically checking to see if next root and next root siblings degree are the same. And then because we're evaluating this in the or expression, this is only going to evaluate to true when this is false. So this is false when root is the same as next root. And then if this evaluates to true, that means root is the same as next root, the degree wise, and next root's degree is the same as next root dot sibling. So the next three roots are, are equal. So we move the pointer when any of these two cases happen, when the next two roots are, e are not equal, or the next three roots are equal. So then if, the, if we move the pointers, that means we don't want to do any linking in the current step that we're in. So we're going to move the previous root, root, and next root pointers forwards. Otherwise, the next two roots are equal. So we have to link it together. And we and remember when we link trees together, we have to make sure that the root with the smallest value is at the top to maintain that heap, minimum heap invariant. So if the root value is less than the next root value, then we're going to delete next root from the list and the root's still going to be in it. So we're going to set the right sibling of root equal to the next root sibling. And then we're going to link the trees where the root is tree A and the child is tree B. So we're going to pass in root and then next root. So this links the trees into a new uh, tree of degree K plus one if both, if both trees are degree K. Otherwise, next root is actually going to be the new root because next root's value is less than the root dot value. But we have to check to see if the root is the head. If it is the head and root is the head when previous, previous root is null, then we're going to set this dot head equal to next root. Otherwise, to remove root from the linked list of roots, we're just going to set previous root dot sibling equal to next root. Then we, and whoops, sorry, this is new heap dot head, not this dot head. Then we finally link the trees. So new root in, this time is going to be the parent because new root is less than the current root. And then finally, we're going to set root equal to next root. And this is going to be next root. So as a review, the second phase is continually, it's basically coalescing, consolidating the new heap because potentially we potentially have two binomial trees of the same degree K. So we link roots of equal degree until at most one root remains of each degree in the new heap. So we set up pointers, previous root, root, and next root. And in this while loop, we have two main branches of flow. The first one is if we move the pointers and we move the pointers when we don't want to link the next two roots. So move pointers is true when the next two roots are not equal or the next three roots are equal. So then if this is true, then we just move forwards and we don't do any linking. Otherwise, we want to do linking. First branch of flow in the linking is if the current root is smaller than or equal to the next root's value, then the root is going to be the new root of the linked tree. So we erase next root from the linked list of roots by setting root.sibling equal to next root.sibling. And then we link the trees where root is the parent and next root is going to be the child. Otherwise, next root is going to be the new parent. So we have to check to see if root is the head. If root is the head, then we set the new heap's head to next root. Otherwise, we're just going to erase it like normal and set the previous root sibling to jump forward to the next root. And yeah. And then we link the trees like usual and set root equal to next root. And whoops, this is actually supposed to be like that. And then at the end of this, we finally set next root equal to root dot sibling. And finally, after the second phase is done, our new heap is going to be consolidated and then we just return the new heap. And yeah, that is union. Okay, so then the next two methods are link trees and merge forest and these two helpers were used in union. This links two trees with degree k minus one and we call these trees b sub k minus one and makes one tree with degree k, bk, where node a becomes the root of the new tree. And it does this by making tree b the new head of tree a's children in constant time. So we're really just adding tree B to the linked list of children of tree A's children. So we do this by first setting tree B's parent equal to tree A, and then tree B's sibling. So tree B is going to be the new first child of tree A. So then this sibling is going to point to tree A's first child. 
We then set tree A's left child to be tree B because tree B is the new left child. And then we're going to increase the degree of tree A to one because we are adding a, because when we link the two trees, the new tree that's coming out of this link is going to be a degree um, of K plus one or K. And that's the definition of binomial trees, right? Because they have because they have a recursive nature. And then the next method, I didn't want to code up because it's a pretty standard method. It's like the merge uh, method in merge sort. This merges two forests and returns one forest sorted by degree in O of t, where t is the number of trees or roots. The final method, again, I'm not going to implement because it's the same as the binary heaps implementation. This is decrease key, and this decreases the value of the given node to the new value. And this returns true if successful and false otherwise. So that was the implementation for the binomial heap. Um, it's quite a lot, I'm not gonna lie, I even got tired halfway through trying to implement it. And I think I didn't really do the best job in this video to really emphasize and go over and repeat method, method uh, instructions and recipes. Um, that's because it's kind of harder for me to do that with videos that are quite long and like, uh, like, like binomial heaps. But I think the key takeaways are really just the union operation. Um, where is it? right here, because the union operation is leveraged with in queue and DQ. In queue and DQ both use union, and that's why we were able to keep these two methods uh, logarithmic while keeping union faster. Uh, the reason why union gets faster from O of N to, or O of N plus M to O of log N plus log M is because we're able to keep that heap invariant that maintains that isometry between binomial the nodes in binomial heaps and binary numbers, just counting in binary. Um, so it's a quite beautiful thing to study and yeah, I think that's about it. So I'm tired. I'm going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoy. And in the next video, we're going to go over lazy binomial heaps, which basically makes these binomial heaps lazier and allows us to, um, make certain operations faster.